if you think of death as sort of this sadistic force, what can he do to sort of mess with you so that you think it's one thing, but it's something totally, and maybe there's a chance for you to escape it, but probably not, you know? Like, I don't know, I, I saw it, I saw it on the runway, I saw it take off, I saw out my window, I saw the ground, and the, and uh, the cabin, it starts to shake, right? And, and the, the left side blows up, and then the whole plane just explodes. Starting with the plane crash, obviously, that's sort of like the, the, uh, the, the opening of the first movie, it's a really intense scene. What was your sort of approach to that? How did you want to make that uh, visceral for the audience? One thing we really felt like, you know, you can't fake physics, so we actually had this big giant gimbal with a plane on it, with the body of the plane on it, and we lifted it as, as high as a as a plane would to crash. And we had stunt performers that who would fly through the plane. You know, the, I think the the one shot that people really felt was when the, all the milk duds were rolling down the, the aisle. I think those are the kind of things that make people really believe in, you know, versus CGI. And I understand at one point the gimbal broke down. I think Kara Smith gave an interview where he said the gimbal broke down at a certain point too, right? After the first rehearsal. <laughs> It was really incredible. We go, okay, that's, that's great. And then the guy goes, well, we can't move this thing for 45 minutes because we had to reset everything. So it was it was not a suspicious start. We rehearsed it, the thing went up, and then it stayed that way. So we had to get the, we had to have giant ladders put up onto the to the set and have the actors climb out of it, you know. It was, a, it was a mess. I had forgotten this, but where Devin Sawa gets burned in his vision, it's very uh, disturbing. You see his flesh sort of crackling and everything. How far did you want to go with that, that the sort of the level of gore with it? Well, we wanted to go as far as they'll let us. We actually had a, uh, a Devin head made of a prosthetic head that we burned, and then we, we added all these uh, skin stuff with CJ. That was done with CJ. We did not burn Devin. <laughs> Have you had anyone else ever complain about like freaking them out with the, with, with, with the plane sequence? When we wrote the first draft, Richard Brenner, who's the executive at New Line at the time, the movie was called Flight 180. He gets the draft, he's going to New York. He's on Flight 180 and he's reading, and he's reading the draft. He's going, oh my God, this is... So that, you know, he was really, he was scared. He was going, oh my God, this is like, you know, some kind of karmic thing that's going to happen to me. And, uh, Ultimately, obviously, he's fine. And if you want to waste your life beating the out of Alex every time you see him, then you can just drop dead. The bus death is sort of like, a, I feel like that's been ripped off countless times since just the, the girl standing in the street and then bam, gets hit by the bus right away. Oh! The timing of that is so careful. And, and I understand it was very carefully timed out. What are your memories of doing that sequence? I remember doing it and thinking like, the bus isn't fast enough, it's not fast enough. And, but the bus can only go so fast because, you know, um, I, you know, basically the sequence is created this way. We had Amanda step back into the spot the, on the take that we like. We froze everything and we put her, her dummy, which is filled with blood and stuff, in her place in the exact posture. And then we ran a bus through it, and then, you know, the dummy exploded. And then my editor, James Koblenz, uh, put it together, like, the next day without any visual effects. And it was like, we all jumped. It was so effective. I remember uh, going to the theaters afterwards, when the movie has already been out. And we're watching, we're sitting in a theater watching the movie, you know, just watching for reactions and stuff. And suddenly we saw all the ushers start walking down the hall, I mean, down the theater to the front. And we're going, what the, why are these ushers coming down that way? And they were waiting because they were waiting to see the audience reaction to the bus, bus hit. Because people were like, popcorn is flying, everything was, it was a great, it was a great reaction. If he goes, uh, young man, you're gonna die at a very young age. <laughs> is that true? And at this point, the movie came out after American Pie, so Sean William Scott just had that role, but did it film before that? Did you know that you were catching him at that moment? Craig Perry was the producer of American Pie, so he he actually pushed us to get Sean William Scott on, on screen. Because at first, Billy, kind of this dorky guy, he's not written as handsome as Sean William Scott, so it took a little bit of convincing, but then we, we met with him and talked with him, and. He has, he does have a goofy quality to him, even though he is, he's kind of this, has these leading, leading man looks. So, you know, we, we went with him and it worked out really great because he was so, so uh, 
popular from American Pie. The Sean William Scott to tap decapitation scene is also a lot of fun with the train. That's another one where you're sort of misdirecting. You think one thing's gonna happen, and then that piece of metal flies off and cuts his head off. Uh, what, 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 what was the sort of thought about sending him out? Well, again, we had a fake Sean William's head. The thing I loved about that was, you know, when we're talking about discussing how we would do it, you know, the I wanted to do it in, I wanted the decapitation to be not this straight across the neck, full head thing. I wanted it to be this kind of crazy, a skewed cut. It was just another thing where we wanted them to think, oh, he didn't get hit by the train in the car. And then, you know, it was something else altogether. I told you you were next. And it just skipped me. So who's next? The ending of the movie, I understand that, that that the ending was reshot sort of after release. There was originally a different ending where the Ali Larder character was pregnant and things like that. How, how did it change? What were sort of your, your ideas about once you decided to redo it, what you wanted the ending to be? The original ending was much was much more kind of philosophical, you know, like uh, <laughs> death will come for you, but the you know, the only way to beat death is for is new life. It was too soft, basically. When we went to previews, you know, everybody loved the movie and then at the end, it kind of just went mm, like that. So once once that was drilled in my head, like the whole philo the whole philosophical ending doesn't work. Then I thought, I mean, the most action packed thing that happens is in the very first scene. So we had to go, well, then let me put something together that allowed us to sort of uh, explain some of the rules. Like if you skip one person, the next person gets it and then do something kind of big that you know, the audience, so the audience has a, has a cathartic moment. And as I understand it, according to Kara Smith, audiences wanted to see his character die too, because he was sort of bully. So that was the other thing. It was like the, the dick that, you know, people didn't, didn't want to, yeah, so people wanted to see him die. And just, just so I'm clear, in the original ending, did Devin Sawa die? He was not. I think we wanted to keep some of the guys alive uh, in order for there to be a possibility of a sequel. Uh, and then, I don't know what happened in, in the second one where he didn't, he was kill, killed off screen. Um, but that's why Ali stayed alive and all that. Jumping ahead to, to number three, you get to come back at that point. And what I like about three so much is I can get the sense that you're you're having a little fun being a little gnarlier, like it's a little more bloody, getting a little more uh, R-rated. Um, so start, and starting with the roller coaster scene, which is a great sequence and reminded me of the 70s disaster movie roller coaster, which I love as well. Uh, how early did that idea come to you? The roller coaster actually came from Richard Brenner. He came to us and said, okay, for the third one, roller coaster. And we go, oh, that's great. That's great. That's a great idea. We went throughout the United States, asking roller coaster uh, amusement parks to let us use their roller coasters. And not one person would let us use a roller coaster because nobody wanted to be associated with Final Destination. So we had to go to Vancouver. They had a small roller coaster and they would let us use that. And we said, well, this is, this is too small. So we basically built a roller coaster in the computer and shot pieces of it in that coaster uh, in Vancouver. And then we had a lot of green screen stuff that we did. We built a big giant track for the beginning and ending of the coaster. We built tracks to put in green screen to, for all the crazy stuff that happened when people were about to fall off the coasters. Uh, it was really elaborate um, because basically no one would let us use, <laughs> no one would let us use a real roller coaster. <laughs> You mentioned the tanning bed, and I think that's also a, a top Final Destination death. That's just a, you're such a great sequence and pretty grisly. What, what was the idea behind that? How did you sort of pull that one off? For me, vulnerability was a very, it's very important. I feel like when you're naked, that is the moment when you feel most vulnerable in, in every way. And how do we put, how do we get our uh, characters in a place where it's not gratuitously naked, but get them vulnerable, have the audience really feel like, oh my God, how, how would you feel if your skin was that? was burning and you can't do anything to cover yourself, you know, to protect yourself. So that was the, the impetus for that scene. It was kind of creepy shooting it, to be honest with you, because it was so, it was scary actually, because you just feel like the, 
your skin, you can feel how your skin would feel, you know? So we did, we, you know, we had burn boxes and stuff like that to uh, replicate the actor's skins sizzling and burning. But it was kind of creepy. How did the actresses feel doing that? Because as you said, they are very exposed. I mean, yeah. In so many ways. Well, you know, we had, we had a closed set. We had a lot of protocol so that it was not, nothing uh, untoward. You know, I think they felt the same way that they, obviously they were not hot but they felt just acting that way. And then, and then we put the makeup on the skin and all that. It is, it is creepy.